Welcome to the CrossFit Max Podcast. What is going on, team? Thanks for tuning in. We are talking about the difference between culture and community. We're talking a little bit more about behind the scenes as leaders in the CrossFit Max community. And we're talking a little bit about business stuff. So we hope that you enjoy this. It's been a while since we've talked about this stuff. And uh, make sure you give us a rating and a review if you haven't. We greatly appreciate it. So let's get to it. Okay, three, two, one. What's up, team? I'm back. Oh just my kidding. god! <laughs> <laughs> we were What's just, up, people? <laughs> Matt and Emma just left the building, and we we're just telling them that we're about to podcast. And Matt was like, "Oh my god, Susie's back!" <laughs> <laughs> Hope you guys are having a fantastic day wherever you're at in the world good what? morning caroline i hope you're having a nice 6 a.m today <laughs> <laughs> didn't she tell us like last yep. week that she listened at 6 a.m people listening that's <laughs> in the morning the afternoon the evening whatever time you are listening to us we appreciate you and yeah i just wanted to say that uh we ha- we've been feeling a lot of love from the community we had a very heartwarming event at the gym which we're going to get into all of that stuff later but yeah let's start this episode with a little bit of positivity and say hey welcome and hopefully you're having a great day and thanks for tuning in we love you we love you especially you (laughs) you know who you are (laughs) (laughs) all right banter topic it kind of goes with today's uh topic uh we're going to be discussing some more of the business stuff because uh it's been a while since we've talked business. Yeah, and it's very front of mind. We're doing a lot of business talk these days. A lot of business savvy things, you know, us business people. <laughs> well, you just sounded like the biggest nerd ever. <laughs> ick, ick, ick. <laughs> I think I just got the ick on my own husband. <laughs> nice. All right, we went from <laughs> starting <Positivity>. strong. <laughs> Yay. Okay, so... <laughs> We, I want to fill you guys in because obviously we've been open for over two years now. Yep. Just over two years. We've been open technically how many months, Suze? 27? 27, 28 no, 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 months? No, we can't be those people. Wow, we're one of those. No, <laughs> no, I was we just can't. curious. I was just curious. So our over two years now. Our is 27 months old and our baby is four months old. And and, <laughs> no, no, no. You and your baby. You just wanted to bring the baby into this topic here. <laughs> <laughs> you and your baby. It's your baby too. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's true. You're right. <laughs> so banter topic is going to be. Let's rewind here. OK, when wait. Susie and I went to Australia a couple years ago, we got to go. We went you to travel. Australia, you always have to Australia. bring it in. Eh? Well, this is re- this is related to the topic here. We flew up Sydney. Technically, we flew north of Australia to go to visit your good friend Florence. Hi, Flo. I hope you're listening. <laughs> and we went, <laughs> Hi, honey. <laughs> and we went to go visit her in a very beautiful beach town called Noosa. Check it out. It's a beautiful place. You guys should definitely visit it if you have the opportunity one day. And anyways, we went to go do a really fun workout at the gym that she trains over there. The gym there is called Vision Performance. And anyways, it was really cool. We did a 5.30 a.m. class. So we got our asses up at on vacation, four forty-five in the morning. Well, I think us. the alarm went off. Wild. And um, and then we we went over there for the five thirty class. By the way, that five thirty class packed. There was like twenty people in that class. It was wild. And then also the six thirty a.m. class was starting right after, and that class also had like twenty people in it. So pretty wild. Um, but anyways, after that we went with Flo and the group of people that we were, or some of the group of people that we worked out with. And we, we, I think we drove what, maybe 400 meter, meters away from the gym, not very far, to this really cool cafe. Yeah. And in case you didn't know, Australia is the coffee capital of the world. Oh, my God. You're so, like, you're just a little Aussie. Yeah. You just get it. I just get it. Uh, crikey. Um, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> crikey. <my. laughs> so we went over to that cafe, and it's pretty cool because one of the things that they do quite often there is they get their workout in, and then um, typically they'll go to that cafe, get some coffees, get some food, and hang out there afterwards at, you know, six thirty, seven o'clock in the morning. And 
my entrepreneurial brain was thinking that would be so freaking cool and that if we had something like that the rabbit <laughs> in, hole. in Montreal. So to give you guys uh, a little bit of uh, um, my thought process here is <laughs> we have our wonderful member at the gym here, uh, Tom, who a few months ago we were talking about, you know, just business stuff in general. And Tom also has a entrepreneurial brain. And anyways, we we're talking about how cool would it be if there was a, a cafe that we would open up close to CrossFit Max. And then we had said it would be so epic if the if the location was where the second cup, which is like a an old franchise that's not doing super well, um, closed down or we had that location that's literally, I don't know, between 200 and 400 meters away from the gym. I think it's like. 600 meters away. Okay, sure. 600 meters. And it's not that far. It's walking distance. You can walk there. Under a kilometer. You could walk there in five minutes. And anyways, a few months ago, it actually... Came up for rent. Came up for rent. It closed. They closed the... They put a big close sign on the windows. And Tom and I potentially looked into it. And we were so freaking close to actually pulling the trigger and opening up a cafe and by so close i mean we potentially had the funding for it approved and we had a business plan we had projections and we even gave a full offer to lease the place but because the uh it wasn't so like in our building for example our building is has a um uh, what do you call okay. it? A landlord, one person who owns the building. Yeah, it was it was recently just sold a couple months ago. Now it's two people, but essentially, like usually, like a person you could talk a person to. Person yeah. you could talk to. This industrial area or this uh, commercial space, excuse me, was owned by a company who owns who property didn't all across hear from Canada. You at all. Yeah, well, they they look at small businesses as more of a higher risk. risk versus a big franchise like a Subway or a Harvey's right. that comes in, right? So they were typically looking for a franchise company coming in. Yeah. And we sent them a legitimate offer. We actually sent them exactly what they were looking for, price and everything. And uh, they just kind of, they didn't even turn us down. They, they kind of just They kind of just ghosted us, yeah. And then we sent, we, sent, uh, we sent one offer and there was like one contingency that they wanted to be reworked a little bit. So we altered it and uh, pretty much gave them everything they were looking for. And at, at the end, they just said, no, we're going to... It's kind of annoying because in residential real estate, you can't look at multiple... Like you can't... Uh, let's say you have a house and you're trying to sell a house for 300,000 and you see all these offers that you have, you can't go to someone and say, Hey, this person offered this. What would you like to offer? You know, you can't start like a bid war between them. No, you just have to take all the offers. Then you have to choose. You can just say that I have other offers, but you're not allowed to say what they are. Exactly. Okay. Got it. In commercial, it's actually completely legal to do that. Yeah. Which is so frustrating. I'm sure they used your offer as a way to leverage someone else that was on paper more desirable. But if we're honest. Well, anyways, to to finish the story, they kind of ghosted us. And just today, I saw someone posted on Facebook a photo of the building that we wanted. No way. (laughs) And uh, now it's like a Mexican franchise, Mexican restaurant franchise. And uh, I nobody a, go eat there. I, I sent a screenshot to Tom, and I was like, "Boo!" Um, but anyways, it was a little banter topic. So Tom and I had this. Uh, and what were you going to call your cafe? Are we outing it? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, well I guess we could out it. We were um, we were going to call it Legends Cafe. And a part of me telling this story here, it, the reason I'm saying this is because we had someone reach out to us on Instagram. Uh, telling us that hey we uh, we own a cafe in it was in Colorado I can't remember where I, w- I want to get the actual um, Denver I'm not sure if it was Denver let me uh, just pulled it up here oh it was in Denver yeah in the Denver area they own a cafe and they're looking at actually opening up a CrossFit gym 
and they were just telling us that they reached reached out because they heard our podcast about opening a CrossFit gym and they really loved our vibe and everything and they listened to a few episodes. So she was just asking for information and, and maybe some some guidance. What's your name? Give her a shout out. Uh, Tabitha. Hey, Tabitha, so if shout you're out to Tabitha. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And uh, anyways, I thought it was really cool. She sent a really nice message. And what's absolutely crazy is this person we've never met from Denver wants to open up a CrossFit gym, reached out to us on Instagram. And then she said that, you know, she owns a cafe. She wants to open up a CrossFit gym. So, you know, I'm going to obviously click on her profile. And this it's is so absolutely crazy. wild. But I click on her on her her profile and I see l- her business handle in her profile and it's Legends Coffee. And I'm like, no freaking way. Like, what are Were the we odds? Were we meant to meet this person? Are they the Colorado version of us? And I was looking at their cafe and their cafe is absolutely beautiful. And it, it was actually almost the same aesthetic that we were kind of looking into as well wow and uh so and man, man, she was... can help you guys with your coffee shop and you can help her with <laughs> your with her cross, cross or gym yeah yeah i don't know if the coffee shop is still uh st- I don't... still a dream but in hindsight it would have been a lot with because it was all happening when thomas was being born and anyways it was uh it, it would have been a I lot i think for it was sure. a little bit of blessing in disguise that that didn't work out because the timing was not great agreed and also, it, but it, it was a much different project than CrossFit Max. It wasn't like I was going to be the barista back there working, you know, 40 something hours From a Coach week. From Coach B to Barista B. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Anyways, I want to, want to give you guys uh, a little. I'll get you an little... apron and you can make me coffee at home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would have been a fun project. We were, we were looking into different things and stuff. And you know, Never say never if there, there's an investor out there listening and they want to drop a bunch of cash on opening a cafe. We're, we're all ears. <laughs> Yeah, it was a it was a fun dream, and maybe it'll ha- maybe it'll happen one day. I thought it was would have been really cool. You know, one at one point in time, we talked about opening a CrossFit gym the same way you just talked about a cafe. Yeah, so, except my heart is much more into a CrossFit gym. And over thank the God cafe. for that because this you are the heart and soul of this CrossFit gym, babe. Oh, thanks, baby. All right. Oh. Oh, did you get the warm and fuzzies? Yeah. yeah. Thanks, love. Hi, honey. So cute. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, honey. <laughs> Sorry, guys. We're just going to pause the podcast for a second. I'm just kidding. <laughs> and we're back. <laughs> All right. Let's get into today's topic of okay. conversation. Let's, let's do it. Let's, let's talk get about into it. it. I guess we'll first chat that we had an incredible event at the gym last weekend. We had our uh, annual relay for breast cancer. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wish I actually looked at the numbers, but we raised just over two thousand dollars. Yeah. It might have even been close to twenty five hundred dollars, and it was just a super heartwarming event. We had about it's always a sixty. Good, I think we had about sixty people show up to do the workout. Wow! We had some cool vendors. We had Babe's Mo- Motion Wear, um, and she sold a bunch of clothing and articles. She donated as well. She donated. Yeah, she donated two dollars for every article right. of clothing, and mm-hmm. I think she sold thirty three or thirty four which is pretty epic in like in the, an hour and a half an hour, hour and a half and during that hour and a half also like people are working out too so it was really like she sold that much clothing and maybe 30 to 45 minutes of actual buying time the and girls here know how to do some damage in a very short <laughs> amount of time and i yeah. love it for it that yeah so she was here we had uh shop santé from the west island lots come in. of lots Kinsley of shaker was, cups uh, for everybody yeah. free shaker cups free supplements for people to try super fun it's really cool, yeah. And then we had a bunch of people sponsor and give a bunch of gift cards or prizes for people to purchase raffle tickets at the mm-hmm. end. And we had like Fresh MTL, we had Pigeon Cafe, we had Paul, um, we had Jen do photography, we had your mom give a bunch of Tupperware water bottles. Am I missing? Barb had purchased some oh, cute yeah, gifts Barb. off Amazon or something. Yeah, Barb got like four or five different. Really, really cute really, gifts. Yeah, like a waffle maker. I think there was like a... Um, there was a white noise machine white noise machine yeah there was also a game in there like a board game for an escape room i think oh and there was like a movie night like a movie night popcorn, popcorn set yeah. yeah so there's a bunch of cool little things in there so cute she's so generous yeah and uh i hope i'm not forgetting any anyone there or anything but um a lot of a lot of really cool stuff and we raised a lot of money in yeah. the raffle prizes 
And it was for an amazing cause. So we do this every October. This was the third event. Wow. Third breast third cancer. Third annual breast cancer fundraiser. Yeah. And it was, uh, it was really just a nice heartwarming event because it's for a great cause. Everyone wore pink, obviously. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we uh, we gathered everybody at the beginning. We I did, did a little speech. A, yeah. And we had a lot of people even from within the CrossFit Max community as well as from other CrossFit gyms yep. in the West Island and uh, people who maybe have never even done CrossFit before. Mm-hmm. Sarah Holt brought a bunch of her colleagues from work. Yeah, she brought she brought three teams, so nine people, or I guess eight other people from, from uh, her, her uh, work. From her work, which is so cool. So we really got to like have like this nice big mixed bag of people who are all working towards or like working out for the same cause i mean almost everyone can can say that their lives have somehow been touched by cancer um Mm. whether it's like a family member or a friend or somebody that you know or yourself even pet or a pet Mm, r.i.p (laughs) max um so it was just really sweet and wholesome, and the vibes were super high. We got lucky. We had a beautiful, sunny day. Super sunny. Thomas came, and he was an all-star, super well-behaved. Oh, yeah. He was the star of the show for sure. <laughs> Everyone <laughs> wanted to, to see him and hang out with him. He got to meet a lot of new friends. A lot of new people, yeah. It was cool. I, I gave a speech at the beginning. Last year, I gave a very emotional speech. Oh, my God. You had everybody uh, <laughs> in tears last year. We had uh, Gio here, and, you know. I got a little emotional because of the story that I was expressing of how how tough she was going through chemotherapy and training at the same time and everything. So that was a much more emotional and I would say more powerful speech this year. Kept it a little bit more chill. <laughs> no emotion. Well, not not no emotions, but no um, no tears. Um, all positive vibes. And like Susie said, there was a lot of other gyms that were here we had teams from yul we had teams from CrossFit new way, new way yeah. uh, we had a lot of people who had never done crossfit before and we had a ton of crossfit max community members and yeah so i gave a little speech at the beginning and just talking about like three really important things we talked about like the mindset going into this and one of the first things i asked people to do was i got people to raise their hand if they've been a f- if they've known someone or been affected by cancer on a personal level Mm -hmm. and i think all 60 people put their hand up in some way yeah right and then i asked if there was anyone willing to keep keep their hand up if they've actually on a personal level gone through cancer and i didn't know but adriana has gone through breast cancer yeah i had no idea i learned that on the weekend yeah so um, shout out shout out to adriana for uh, I think Maricel told me she was like 37 when she had it originally. Wow. So it's been a few years. Um, so shout out to Adriana for toughing survivor. that out, going through everything and being a survivor for sure. Um, anyway, so I give a, I, I talked about three important things. Number one was the mindset, right? And, you know, at CrossFit, we talk a lot about self-deprecating jokes that we, that we give ourselves as we're training. Yes. Right? That Susie. is something we are very are very mindfully trying to change Mm -hmm. within our can you can you give some examples you're pretty good at uh, talking about this this topic here like a self-deprecating joke yeah give a few well like i'm gonna die in this workout or i'm not i'm not i suck at cardio i suck at cardio or it's kind of like you're putting yourself down in a humorous way yeah like you make a like you laugh about it like you're not saying it in like uh i suck at cardio i freaking hate this you're like oh my god this workout's gonna kill me because i'm so bad yeah but it's like no you're gonna have fun and it's gonna be challenging and it's gonna be awesome yeah so i talked about that mindset and you know how it carries over not just in the workout part of life but also carries outside of the gym thinking about building confidence yeah like how you talk building to a strong yourself mindset matters. how do you talk to yourself mm. you know going for that promotion at work feeling confident going into uh, a meeting right like a, like a big time meeting at work or maybe studying for a, an exam mm-hmm. or starting a small business and having yeah. the courage to go and do that and, and yeah so it has a huge carryover so i talked about the mindset and that was really cool and I also talked about, you know, thinking about keeping all the like all those hands that were up. Right. So right. the fact that we have the opportunity to now show up to the gym and work out 
it's pretty powerful. So when you're when you're making these you know these self-deprecating jokes, jokes about well, why I don't want to do this oh, workout I hate or burpees, yeah, yeah. how this so evil burpees are yeah. evil. And you know, you know how it, many people would kill to be able to do burpees? <laughs> yeah. And it's so funny because after having that speech, there was a few moments where, because I didn't participate in the workout, I was coaching the entire group and running it. Right. And I would go go around and people would, there were still some people saying that stuff and someone was like, oh, I hate the echo bike. I was like, no, no, we love it. Like we're getting a lot of fitness out of it. So just making those small things. Yes, it's hard. Yeah. Like we're not, we're not being like toxic positivity where it's like everything is awesome all the time things are allowed to be hard but you don't hate them Mm -hmm. actually if you use someone's logic against them in those situations you know like you you're paying money to be here you're able-bodied your free will brought you into this moment you don't hate it you love it don't say you hate it because you're like programming yourself you know like you you showed up. You're doing this thing. You're with all your friends. It's a freaking beautiful day. Like you're yeah. having a great time. Yeah. Sixty People of you just, guys doing this for a cause. Like how cool is this? I think sometimes we say self deprecating things to protect ourselves if we feel like maybe we're not amazing at a certain skill or whatever. We say something. So it's almost like you insult yourself before someone else can, but no one is gonna insult you because we all think you're amazing for showing up. And actually you're the, probably the hardest person to yourself than anybody else. But if you start to practice it saying like, oh, I find the echo bike really hard. What a great opportunity for me to improve or, oh, my gosh, I like to say like when I'm on the echo bike, I agree. It's super tough. And it's one of the machines I find like I get out of breath the quickest. And I'm like, wow, think about how much fitter I'm getting every time I go on the echo bike. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, I'm gaining so much fitness right now. I can just feel myself getting fitter by the second. Yeah, for sure. Or you can say things like, damn, these calories aren't going up as fast as I want them, you know? Yeah. It's not, oh, I suck at this or I'm bad at this. Exactly. Exactly. So it doesn't, like, it's really important to distinguish that it's not like, yay, everything is amazing all the time. Everything's so easy. Everything is beautiful. It's allowed to be really challenging. You're allowed to find it hard, but it doesn't suck. You don't hate it. Mm -hmm. You're not bad. Yeah. Those those are the things that we want to avoid saying. Absolutely. And the second thing I was talking about was just, health in general right and cancer is something that you know the increase of cancer rate is very very high right now and something that we don't talk about enough is that when you are focusing on your health you're putting the odds in your favor right Right. and not a lot of not not, we're not talking about this enough too many times people think cancer is just random right and in certain in many cases it can be and it will be right i I talked about geo last year super healthy very clean does everything right does everything Mm -hmm. right manages her stress you know like she's just a beautiful human being Mm -hmm. and for sure that we've been affected by people who have just got really really unlucky and it's so heartbreaking but that being said if we can focus on our health and we can put the odds in our favor then that's what we should be focusing on right so i talked about health and then the last thing i talked about was community right which kind of brings us to the topic today Mm -hmm. we want to discuss the difference between culture and community and every crossfit gym says that they have the best community mm-hmm. and i truly believe that every crossfit gym does have the best community yes. i think they the, believe it and they are correct i think the people that are inside the gym inside any crossfit gym they are going to have like the best community people they're going to have the the most amazing people and I, and I always say that the best relationships are formed inside a crossfit gym right which a little reminder if you're seeing someone that you don't know in a CrossFit gym, go, go up say and sh- hi. go say hi, shake their hand, or give them some props, yeah, uh, and just introduce yourself because you never know. Show them what the community is made of. You never know what that l- quick little introduction can lead to because and you've been new before and you know how that feels. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So l- let's talk about the difference between culture and community. Tell them what the community is, love, because we, we kind of know what community is, but we Let's, might not know the difference between what that 
like what community is, is the actual like unique individuals the people that make up the group exactly so the actual people who are part of crosshair max that's the community yeah those people matt emma caroline all those people that are coming into the gym those are the community members right correct you want to tell them what the difference between or what culture means i should say so the culture is the belief system and the shared thought process and the shared values that the community has yeah exactly so the culture is what unites us Mm -hmm. and the culture exists with or without specific community members exactly so like the culture of like who we are as crossfit max is the same whether i'm there or i'm not there i'm a community member Mm -hmm. but the culture exists on its own it's its own entity yeah but it's all powerful but that being said the culture comes from somewhere and the culture you know we're a brand new business was instilled by us right right. so there are things that we believe deeply to our values Mm -hmm. and then what we have to do is we need to enforce those values into our community 100 percent. and we need to not not fake it you can't fake these types of things they're they're truly like within ourselves and we believe them to a t and if we preach that and we start to instill these certain values inside the community then what's going to happen is yes then you could step away and then other people are going to start to preach exactly those values which and is what, build on that culture which is what we see a lot within our gym is that we came up with a culture a mission a belief system brandon and i decided like who are we who do we want to be who, what is the culture of cross the max cross the max and then everything we do gets filtered through our culture mm-hmm. there can't be things that go against who we are or else people are confused about what the culture is and if the culture is extremely clear which is something i'm really proud of that we've done i think our culture oozes out of everything that we do then the members join the community and integrate into the culture and then they too ooze the culture out into everybody and then this culture almost becomes bigger than us and Mm. it is all-encompassing but just like anything, you you can't go against your culture. You need to maintain that. You need to be constantly reinforcing who are we, what we are, all of these things. Because the second you start to poison your culture or people become confused about the culture, maybe you do something that's like totally out of left field that like, you know, Brandon and I come up with a campaign and we're like, you can't do anything. And yeah. everyone's like, eh, what? Yeah. Then you you start to lose trust in your culture and that would be like a massive problem. Yeah. So like some of the cultures that are important to us and what I talked to the group about in terms of community, I didn't actually say culture, but when I was talking about the community and I talked about the CrossFit Max community specifically yeah. because I was mentioning that there were a lot of outsiders here, right. is that at that event, something that I preach a lot of is we start as a team and we finish as a team. 100%. There's nothing that makes me more upset than someone putting away their equipment while others are working out. Yeah. Let's just say you finish a MedCon, it's five rounds for time. Uh, you got barbells, you got gymnastics, and you're on the you know, you're on the cardio machine, and someone finishes before you, and then they just like start unloading their barbell, walking across you, putting their plates and barbells away. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's just like such a massive sign of like disrespect. Yeah, we start as a team and we finish as a team. We make sure one of the things we make sure is we're punctual. 100%. So at the end of class, you'll be able to have time, time to put your stuff away. But when we if we finish before other people, we're not we're not just putting our shit away. We're cheering, we're on, cheering, other cheering on others in our community, right? So that's that's a part of our culture. Now the thing is, if I preach that, I can't go do a group class after and just start putting things away while I finish my workout faster than other people, right? Absolutely. I would never do that because that again to my core value that's what it goes exactly so i would never do that it wouldn't even be a thought process because i just it like grinds my gears when people do that so as a let's say a leader in the community if you're starting 
you're building this culture, you have to like truly follow along with these things that you believe in. Or maybe you're believing in this so hard that you would never even think about going against, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you're listening to this podcast and you're thinking, okay, I want to do this in my business, you truly have to believe it and you have to go all in on that. And I've before we opened CrossFit Max, I was a part of many, many CrossFit gyms. Right. And there were moments where there was different belief systems in the way my philosophy was or other coaches or even the owner of the place, right? Mm. For example, I brought up this specific topic to the owner at the previous gym that I was at because they had they had literally done that. They had finished their workout. They did a partner workout with um, in the group and they started putting their barbell away. And then after I pulled them aside and said, hey, like something that I've been preaching in the classes is exactly like what I just start mentioned. Start as a team, finish as a team. Start as a team, team, finish as a team. We don't put our stuff away. And they flat out said, well, I don't really think it bothers people. So to them, that belief system, that's not what they believed in and it wasn't part yeah. of their culture. So it's really hard from a business standpoint to instill this type of culture if one of the leaders it's in the community is conflicted with it right correct so you really have which to which is why we opened our own goddamn gym <laughs> <laughs> yeah. sorry no, i mean it's you know like they're like everyone has their own belief system 100 percent. Right? and then some some people might not agree with that statement yeah maybe right? it doesn't bother th- some people maybe it doesn't but... bother them at all but to me it, it it's just a sign of respect and a sign of like deep teamwork here if you can yes. cheer someone on at the end you have to be like in their face come on let's go it's just hey you for, got this from hey keep going you got this you know or even just waiting to clean up your stuff and then at the end giving them a big high five that's huge for me right? yeah it creates such an atmosphere of um support and positivity just taking that initiative to make sure that every member who is working out in the gym gets the same respect, the same workout, the same benefit, whether you're quicker and you get finished done earlier or whether you're the last one to finish the workout, Mm -hmm. everybody should be treated the same. And no one person is better than the other because of their time on the scoreboard. Absolutely, yeah. And I mean, just because you're fitter than other people doesn't always mean mean you're going to finish first. You know, there's people that... I finished one of the last in in the class, you know, and it's happened many, many times before, and that's totally fine. Mm-hmm. And you know, but it feels end, good yeah. at the end if you're the last one. It feels real good yeah. when people are going, like, "Don't give up. You got this. Great mm. job." You don't. Uh, I mean, I know some people get a little bit shy or whatever when that happens, but yeah. it feels a hell of a lot worse when people are cleaning up and you're like, "Holy shit!" Like, I still have a whole nother round to do, and like you feel almost like anxious as the person working out. If people start cleaning up, you're like, "What the hell?" Like, it's not fair. Yeah. Another thing that uh, we literally just talked about earlier was like the self-deprecating jokes. That's right? a one huge no-no. One, in one our of the gym. one of the big things is we have like a growth mindset here. So as soon as people start to say that. It's like an instant reaction for Susie or myself my to kind of just correct them a little bit, right? The people that were doing the event, like, hey, I hate this. I hate the bike, you know? Like, no, no, you're crushing the bike. Or, you're doing so what good. What did they say? Like, the, like the, people always call the Echo Bike, like, the evil machine or the de- devil machine. The devil machine. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, don't let a machine have so much power over you. Yeah. You're on that machine pushing hard on that machine yeah right? like, like it's not the opposite the machine's not on you right now you yeah know? literally <laughs> like what you're gonna let this machine dictate your life yeah for sure just yeah. a little old bicycle and you know what's <laughs> absolutely hilarious is one of the main main things i say is there's like one major rule in my group classes mm. and you you're not allowed to say the word can't can't right and it's so funny because a few weeks ago i'll actually use caro as an example again we used her last week but a few weeks ago i I honestly cannot remember what we were talking about, but I said I can't. And then it was kind of at the end of like a, a class. Reaction. And then she's like, Whoa, you can't, you, you're not allowed to say the word can't. And then there was three other people that just like chimed in from across Everyone the gym. Everyone was like, Ooh, let's bring you yeah. right back down to reality, honey yeah. bunny. You know, and that is amazing. So that is we the literal that. definition of us starting this culture of it, having a growth yep. mindset. Not allowing people to use the word 
can't in our gym and then i said it accidentally and like several people are just like whoa 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 you can't do that you know that would say the word can't you know i love when that happens oh it's so when good when somebody uses my culture yeah against me i'm like i get this whole heartwarming feeling of like it's working mm-hmm. like we did it yeah it exists without when brandon and i are not in the gym It's not like people just say can't, make self-deprecating jokes, clean up their shit. Mm -hmm. Those things still are true to the core of the gym when neither of us are here, or at least so I think. And hopefully that stuff doesn't just go in the gym. Hopefully that carries over into their everyday life. I think that is probably the coolest thing about um, what we're doing here is the amount of feedback we get from people who are like, Oh my gosh, changing my the way I frame my thoughts in the gym has changed the way I frame my thoughts outside of the gym. Mm-hmm. And like it's it's okay if you're unable to do something. Like I'm unable to deadlift 300 pounds. Like I yeah. physically am not able. Yeah. Okay? There is a difference between not being physically able to do something yet yeah. and saying like, "Oh, I can't keep up with the burpees or you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I you're, can't do another one. You're allowed to not be able to do everything. We are not superhuman. You are allowed to find skills and workouts and moments really difficult. You are allowed to come in the gym and have a bad day. You are allowed to be in a grumpy mood. Like all of these things are allowed. Like this isn't like the it's not toxic positivity. We're not saying like you need to be happy all the time. It's only good vibes. Can, 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 can. But changing the way you frame your thoughts like I can't do a kipping pull up or I'm really looking forward to learning how to do a kipping pull up Mm -hmm. or what should I should I practice so that I can get my first kipping pull up. Those are the types of phrases we want to hear versus I can't do a kipping pull up. Maybe that is true. Maybe you don't currently have the physical capability of doing a kipping pull up. But if you tell me I can't do a kipping pull up, I'm going to tell you you're never going to be able to do a kipping pull up with that attitude. Right. Because you're telling yourself I can't. Instead, if you come up to me and you say I would love to get my kipping pull ups. How do I I get there? What are the things I have to do? Oh, my God. I'm just going to have like I'm just going to want to give you a big hug and give you as many tips as I can to help you get to that goal. And I'm going to make it my mission to help you get there. Yeah, that's the big difference between a growth mindset and a fixed mindset. The fixed mindset is I can't or I'll never be able to that you've predetermined what you can and cannot do. And then you are correct you will become a self-fulfilling prophecy the growth mindset spins it in a way where you know what i want to like i want if if someone says i can't do a kipping pull up ask yourself or ask them Mm. would you want to would you like to do a kipping pull up like if you had the physical capability would you find that that is would you be proud to be able to do that would you think that's cool would and most people are like, yeah, of course. Why would I not want to be able to do a kipping pull-up? It's like, okay, well, let's work towards getting that kipping pull-up. Exactly. Let's work towards building onto that back squat. And I think nine times out of ten when someone tells me I can't do something, they're wrong. Oh, my God. I would say the percent of that is much higher than nine out of ten. I would say 9.999 out of 10. <laughs> I can't chain my toes to bar. Okay, hop up there. So, show me what you got. Boom, boom. Okay, well, those were just two toes to bar. Well, I can't do more than two. Okay, but that's not what you said. You said I can't chain my toes to bar, and you just showed me two in a row. That's chaining them. Yeah. Yeah, most of them. You I know? Can, I can't do double unders. Oh. oh. All right, let me see you try. Double under. All right, well, you just did one. Yeah, but, but I, I can't only chain. did one. Yeah, but I can't chain them. It's like, okay, well, that was different than what you just said. Let's work. Let's figure out how to chain them right now. Right? Yeah. Let's figure out the skill set that you need, the timing, the coordination, and everything. A million times. Right? Per- yeah. So, so these, these we're types talking. Of, yeah, sorry. Uh, sorry. Go ahead. You go, ahead. go, you go. No, no, you go. You go. No, you go. No, you go. Okay, I'll go. Okay, you go. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just no, kidding. You go. You go. <laughs> go, woman. <laughs> Nice. I'm glad you guys are all here for the awkwardness. <laughs> okay. So we're talking about the CrossFit Max culture right now. We talked about 
not allowing self-deprecating jokes. Well, we talked about having the growth having mindset. the growth mindset. Yeah, that's our culture. Culture is having the growth mindset. Having the growth mindset. Something else we talked about was we start as a team. We yep. finish as a team. Something else that I would like to talk about that's part of our culture that is very significant to when we started opening our gym. We said, like, what is one of the things that is, like, crucial is making sure every single person who walks inside the gym is greeted with a warm welcome. Mm -hmm. This might seem small, but so critical to Brandon and I's mission when opening is that every single person who walks in the door is greeted with a hello, a welcome, hey, how's it going, what's up, yeah. a wave, and insert even, name, even a, wave. a wave if you're in the middle of coaching a class or even, you know, sometimes I'm working out and people walk in, I try and catch their, catch their eyes in the middle of my reps, just give them a nod, whatever, acknowledging every single individual that comes in the class. And what is amazing about being absolutely intent with that is that now almost always when a new person walks in the gym they don't just get a welcome from the coach i notice very very often that other members in the class take the initiative to introduce themselves and make that person feel welcome because part of our culture is everybody gets a warm welcome and so when we model a warm welcome, the members take ownership over that feeling. Like at CrossFit Max, I am a member of CrossFit Max. We are a welcoming community. That's who we are. It's part of the culture is to be welcoming. And therefore, any new person that comes in is given a warm welcome, not just from the owners, not just from the coaches, but from the other people in the class as well. Hell yeah. Well said, baby. Thanks. That was great. What were you going to say? I don't know. I don't remember. Probably that was wasn't really as cool. good as that. Definitely not as cool as that. There's a there's a few things that we've started with in in CrossFit Max, and they've really blossomed into what this amazing community is right now. Mm. And uh, I freaking love it. It's over two years now that we've been opened, and I would recommend to anybody that if you are opening a business or you want to you wanted to start something mm -hmm. just write out some of your belief systems like what are, what do you believe to your to your core soul that these are things that are important you know again one of them being on Sundays we sign up for a workout mm. right? like th that's like sign up for your week of classes and then when you make that reservation commit to it yeah commit commit to your health com like set health as the priority mm. everything else in life will feel so much better so much easier physical mental emotional existential social all the things will feel so much better mm -hmm. when you set health as your priority and we believe that to our soul right so there are certain cultures that we've done but if you're opening up something new you can't write or you shouldn't write, I should say, right, correcting <laughs> myself here. You shouldn't write something like, "My, uh, I want my employees to show up early before, or like, it's like 15 minutes before their shift, but you always show up late, right? Like you show up on time or you always show up late. You don't mm -hmm. believe that to your heart. It's clearly not right? important to you. It's not important to you. Or if you let things get away, if you say, hey, uh, well, let's use a gym example. Like, you know, I don't... Uh, I want everybody to make sure they're clean and everything. But after you finish your workout, you don't wipe down your bike or your dumbbells or anything like that, right? Like you have to lead it by example and you have to truly believe in it. So if you're someone who wants to do this from a, a business standpoint, I would highly recommend just write, take a piece of paper or in your phone, go in your notes mm. and just write a few things that are ultra important to you that you believe so deeply and then from and there, start to, you have to lead. You have to lead by example. Start doing those things religiously. And then other people will start to correct, uh, start to follow that culture. And we'll start. you'll start to see it happening within your community, right? You'll, you'll hear this one person. Wait, what did, what did that one person just tell the other person in the class? Mm. Oh, that person was saying something negative and they corrected them. They said, oh, you're being so negative, you know? Like, let's spin this. Like, we got this. Or... 
oh, that person started putting their equipment away. And then another client said, no, 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 don't put your equipment away after. You know, let's cheer them on. That shit is so freaking powerful from a leader in this community. And you start mm. to see these things and you're like, mm, yes. <laughs> yeah. It's it a really cool feeling. gets me just so amped up when a client takes the words out of my mouth before I can say them. Yeah. Or even like someone walking into the gym and someone saying hello to them before you can even get there. Oh my God. It's you know? amazing. It's so freaking it's awesome. It's literally amazing. I think though, if I were to give like a overall arching like business tip when it comes to coming up with your culture, not only do you need to like put into paper your core values and things that are important to you, you also need to make sure that every single business decision that you make from then on yeah. fits your culture. Mm -hmm. Okay. You need to make choices. A lot of choices. All the time. Every day. There are so many decisions so that you many. need to make. <laughs> <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> okay. But every time you make a choice, whether you own a cafe, whether you own a gym, whether you own a, a t-shirt store, does this fit who who we are as mm -hmm. a brand as a culture think like we just launched our new cool vibes t-shirt merch okay when we're coming up with the next merch does it fit our culture our culture is community is lifting each other up is the same energy that maria slash cool vibes has mm -hmm. she represents everything that we think is beautiful and valuable and who we are so yes this piece of merch matches our culture Okay, you you can't have a successful culture if you ever stray from it. The second you start to stray from your own culture, you're gonna, things get messy. Mm -hmm. I agree. And you lose trust. I've seen it a lot. I've been a part of it oh. a lot, unfortunately. And it's tough. Uh, it's tough to understand the direction that you're going at. And so Susie's saying this that you should that you should make these decisions around your culture. But also on the flip side of that, it makes decisions easier because you're trying to fit your culture. So you're mm -hmm. like, does this fit my culture? Yes, no, no, it's not happening. Cancel. Right? And then yes, it's like, okay, then you can start to elaborate on some of the things, right? Amazing. Should, if, I, if I truly believe in, uh, I don't know, freaking CrossFit as like my main thing or like functional movement, but then I start adding... I don't know, a ballet class in here. I, this is not part of my culture, you know? It's not going to fit the messaging here, right? So those things don't mesh really, really well here. Um, or like just like basic things. If part of our culture is to show up to class on time and every time people are late, we don't say anything to them and we just let it go. Yeah. And we don't worry about it and we don't care. Yeah. Well, that goes against our culture. So yeah. when people are late consistently... We pull them aside. Hey, what's going on? I'll, I'll Everything good? I'll use uh, a business that I freaking love. A, oh, a, 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 um, a gym, a franchise gym, excuse me, in the U.S. Metabolic. called Metabolic. Yeah. One of their biggest pillars. Pillars, yeah, is um, don't be late, be great. And they, so they're kind of a strength and conditioning facility, but mm -hmm. they run it. Uh, without barbells so think of it uh, kind of like a, a boot camp franchise but for strength and conditioning got it and they lock the door they lock the door so if you're not let's say that you have the 4 p.m class if you're not there at 4 p.m the door's locked there's no ah oh, there was traffic there was work there was this my kid blah 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 it, nothing. It, my, t my kid got stuck it's like their culture is if you're late you're not doing the class and they still Stick to it. There's no exceptions to this. The door is nope. locked at 4 p.m. It's 4:01. You're not getting in. It's, an, it's it, it is what it is, you know. And that's an extreme. That's with. But these people believe this culture to their soul, right? And all and, of their it, current members all, yeah. abide by the culture because yeah. they've done such a good job of it. And there are huge. They're they're franchise getting really big in the u.s i wouldn't be surprised if eventually we start to see some in canada but they have i think almost 100 franchises yeah. in the u.s right now and all of them they believe that they all do the yeah. same thing you, and you, if you're a new person and you get locked out all of the current members are gonna say well you were late mm -hmm. nobody's gonna feel bad for you 
Yeah. Just the same way as now when a new person comes into our class and says, oh, I freaking hate burpees. I suck at them. And yeah. another person in our class is going to be like, no, don't worry. It's going to be challenging. We're going to do awesome because they're indoctrinated in the culture here. Just the same way as metabolic is strict about their punctuality. Those members, when they get locked out because they were late. They understand. They understand. Yeah. They don't send an email complaining. Yeah. They're just like, well, that's the rule. I'll use one final example here, completely away from the gym thing. I love it. I got a really cool, uh, amazing trip to go to Boston a couple weekends ago to go see the New England Patriots with my dad. Love it. And if you take trips to the States, you got to go to a (laughs) Chick-fil-A. So I asked my dad if he wanted to go to uh, Chick-fil-A and we made a nice little detour. Anyways, that being said, we were so the uh, NFL game Patriots play on Sunday. We were going down on Saturday, and I told my dad if we want to go to Chick Fil A, it's got to be on the Saturday when we're going down because on Sunday, every Chick Fil A in it's the closed. entire U.S. is closed because the owners of that franchise are religious and they believe to their soul that every that every person needs one day off minimum in the week so that could be just a day off or that could be for religious purposes to go and right. to church or whatever but they believe to their soul that sundays needs to be a full day off from any sort of work i mean they have I don't even know how many thousands of franchises in the U.S. It's a massive franchise. And, oh, my God, if you go to the States, so good, that (laughs) Chick-fil-A. If you go to the States, you know that every single Chick-fil-A, not a single exception, Sundays, they're closed. And my dad was saying, why would they do that? It's such a silly business decision. And I said, no, it's actually brilliant because their culture is that everyone needs at least one day completely off from work and they believe that Sundays is a full day off and they take that. And every single Chick-fil-A, thousands of them across the entire U.S. are closed on Sundays. And everyone who goes there knows that Sunday they're closed. Except for us on our honeymoon in Miami when we really wanted Chick-fil-A on a (laughs) Sunday and we couldn't get it. But that's a story for another day. (laughs) Yes. Okay. Okay. Client of the week pew, 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 pew. is someone. <laughs> I got into it. Sorry. <laughs> Real into it. So into it. Is a couple. <gasps> Two for one. Two for one. We don't do this often, but I wanted to shout them out. They are a beautiful couple. Beautiful couple. They are so dedicated to the community. So dedicated. <laughs> they are both on unlimited CrossFit memberships. Unlimited. Mr. and Mrs. Unlimited. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of them is just upgraded. Exactly. To but they're currently both on unlimited. Both on unlimited. One of them I had a really nice heart to heart conversation with last week. She talked about how CrossFit has changed her life and she was saying how crazy that might sound and i was like no 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 i girl i get it i get it this is i mean this i believe crossfit has changed my life for all the most amazing things and um those two clients oh well the other one also has upped his membership and has been coming in with such a great attitude great mindset he's been absolutely killing it inside the gym he's been focused he's been um really just really just attacking workouts in a really fun way yeah and and his dance moves are fire dance moves are fire play some Nicki Minaj he's all over the floor he loves to twerk it those two <laughs> clients are Nat and Aime yay so shout out to you two Thanks, beautiful guys. people for just being you know really awesome people in our community they are the people that go up to people and shake their hands when they don't when they, they, when ooze they meet them crossfit max culture when, yeah exactly when they meet the people they shake their hands instantly they're always cheering each other on they're cheering others in the classes they're just beautiful souls and we're really lucky to have them in our community i think thomas is obsessed with emmy also I think I don't know. I think it may might be obsessed with Thomas. He was playing it's out some a br- <laughs> mutual mutual love affair. <laughs> Next thing you know, Tommy's gonna be twerking it soon with him. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
shout out to those two amazing, beautiful souls. And we hope that you guys got some good value out of this podcast. We really enjoy talking about the business. I know we talk about all sorts of things, but sometimes it is fun to talk about some of the things we do behind the scenes to make... Nothing is accidental, my friends. Nothing. All right. You're really into this, like, echoing what I'm saying, eh? What do you mean? I don't know what you're talking about. Echo. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, we appreciate each and every one of you, like we said at the beginning of the podcast. We hope you have an amazing day, and we'll catch you in the next one. Don't forget to buy us a protein shake. In the links below. See ya. Bye.